now for this extra bonus, Every Investor's Guide to Wall Street Words. That's 800-521-3436. Call now. Welcome back. It's time for Tech Talk with our technical analyst, John Murphy, and we're going to talk about one of the most popular indicators uh, that we certainly talk about here on the network. I know a lot of our viewers follow that, and that, first of all, is the McClellan Oscillator. But, John, you're using this because there's, there's some favorable things out there for the market at this point. Well, so, you know, we've been talking a lot about a negative divergence in the stock market, the advanced decline line, the breadth numbers. Uh, Ted, uh, David, and myself on Friday, we did a Money Talk segment, and we got into a discussion of the divergence. And I pointed out that although there is a negative divergence, the advanced decline numbers were actually improving somewhat. Mm -hmm. And I thought this would be a short-term positive for the market. And it just so happens that one of our viewers asked about the McClellan Oscillator. So we're going to start off with that. And basically, the point we're going to make is that the breadth numbers are improving over the short run. Uh, let's begin with the first graph. It's a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Now, uh, before we get to that, let me just mention this chart on the top there, the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. Mm -hmm. Notice those two lines that I have drawn on that. We've gotten a lot of mail on that particular pattern, and uh, I've even mentioned it. That is what we refer to in textbook terms as a possible broadening formation or expanding triangle. A lot of people have been concerned about that because it is potentially a negative pattern. However, uh, about six or seven trading days ago, notice we broke out above the upper line in the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. That pretty much ruled that out as a negative pattern. I just wanted to, to clear that point up because I know I had mentioned it as a potential negative pattern. I've gotten a lot of mail on it. Mm -hmm. We're above the upper line, so that pretty much rules that out as a topping pattern. And of course, we're in new highs. Now, the line along the bottom, this is the McClellan Oscillator. We show the, these numbers on the board. Uh, this is a, it's a fairly complicated little formula, which I'm not going to get into, but it is based on the, um, the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline numbers. It's actually basically the difference between roughly a 20-day and a 40-day moving average of the advanced decline numbers, except we use exponential smoothing. Uh, but the bottom line is that we wind up with an oscillator, so sort of an oscillator of the advanced decline line. And the two things to keep in mind with this is normally when you're below the zero line, and as you can see, we've been below that for, for quite a while, up until uh, a couple of weeks ago. That simply indicates a short-term negative for the market. However, about uh, three weeks ago, notice we moved back above the zero line. That is normally a positive. By the way, notice we got down to a minus 100. Normally when this oscillator gets down there, it indicates a very deeply oversold condition in the market. Then if it moves above the zero line, which it did about three weeks ago, that simply indicates that the short-term sentiment, uh, the short-term uh, breath figures are turning more positive. And I, I mentioned on Friday that this thing had turned positive. We're in the 50s right now. Now, uh, to get really overbought, this has to go up above 100. We haven't been there in almost a year. It will be interesting to see if we can do that. But it does show that on a very short-term basis, the advanced decline numbers are beginning to uh, improve somewhat. By the way, that's also helping the longer-range version of this, which is the summation index. Mm -hmm. I mentioned on Friday also that that was giving us a long-term negative divergence. But with the oscillator in positive territory, the summation index is moving up again as well. So even though the longer term outlook is still somewhat cloudy, the message here is that the short term numbers are improving, are improving. somewhat. Yeah. Now you mentioned the advanced decline line briefly and I know you want to look at that a little bit further and that's our next chart, John. Is this confirming basically what you what you just mentioned? Very definitely. So in fact, uh, the, the turns in the advanced decline line coincide almost on a daily basis with the turns in the McClellan Oscillator. If we have that chart, we're going to look at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line. And notice the peak that was set on September the 15th. That is actually a very important date. And uh, notice the, the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line, which is a measure of breadth, mm -hmm. had declined down to uh, October the 27th, and a lot of us had expressed some concern about that because if it continued, it could hurt the overall market. But notice that it bottomed on October the 27th, and the advanced decline line has been moving up. In fact, we're up again today, not dramatically, but we are inching up. We're trading at the highest level in about a month, and we have broken the downtrend line. So even though there is still a negative divergence in the sense that we're still below the September high, clearly the short-term trend has turned higher, suggesting that possibly the advanced decline line might be headed all the way back up to retest the September high. So it's a short-term 
positive for the market. I think the real test of the staying power of this rally will come when that advanced decline line gets back up to that September high. That may take place later in the year or possibly even in January. But it is good news, at least on a very short-term basis. So it's helping to fuel this rally in the market today. How are the broader markets doing? I know you watched the Russell 2000, John, and you want to take a look at that as well. Um, is it faring as well, or does th do things look as bullish short-term for Well, it's indexes? sort of the same story, Sue, because where the weakness has been in the stock market has been the smaller stocks mm -hmm. because the big cap indexes have been in new highs. For that reason, I've been following the Russell 2000 very closely, as have other analysts. We have a chart of that that we're going to look at, and you're going to see this looks almost identical to the advanced decline sure line. That we look at the dates even. I put the dates on here just because it struck me. 9.15, when the Russell topped out, uh, that was the exact date that the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line turned down. Notice October the 27th, when the Russell formed that little double bottom and turned back up again, that was the exact day that the advanced decline line turned higher. So this is clearly where the weakness has been. Now the good news is that we have broken the downtrend line. It looks like we're trying to turn higher. Mm -hmm. We're up about a half a point today. The key is that 304 level. We're trading at 302 in a fraction today. It looks like the Russell wants to turn higher here. If we can take out that 304 level, that would confirm firm the upturn in the smaller stocks. At the very least, it might. I think it would signal a possible retest of the old highs up around 316. And again, that will be a, a test for the broader market, whether or not this is able to move into new highs. Uh, so two things I think that are helping this rally. One is the January effect. We're approaching right. that time of the year where smaller stocks tend to outperform bigger stocks, which carries into January. So if that kicks in this year, uh, that could also help this rally. And the other is the dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen in the past that when the dollar is very strong, this tends to favor the smaller stocks. The dollar is at a seven-week high today against the German mark. So for a lot of reasons, I think this is good news. I think the problem will be in January when a lot of these indexes... When it's over. And yeah. also when this period of seasonal strength runs its runs course. Its I think course, we're going to be yeah. okay till January, and then we'll start worrying again. What about the bond market? How is that playing into the dollar scenario and the overall market I think scenario. there's good news there as well, Sue. The bond market's been consolidating. We're above the 118 level in bond futures today, and it looks like we're getting ready to break out to the upside. So mm -hmm. we've got good news on the bond front, good news on the dollar front. International markets are quite strong. So the pendulum is clearly swinging to the upside, I think at least through the balance of the year. Okay, John. Thanks for the forecast. John Murphy, our technical analyst here at CNBC. Coming up next, it's time for Money Talk. Are you in the market for a new home? Well, up next on Money Talk, we'll tell you about some bills and other monthly bills and replace them with a monthly payment you can easily afford. Call 1-800-CHAMPION and speak to one of our dedicated, caring employees. Doesn't everyone deserve a second chance? Champion says yes. President Clinton is scheduled to brief the nation tonight on his plans to send U.S. soldiers to Bosnia. Republican leaders in Congress are taking a wait-and-see attitude on the matter. Both Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole and House Speaker Newt Gingrich say the president must explain in detail why the troops need to be sent. CNBC will carry the president's speech live tonight at 8 Eastern. Gingrich went before the cameras in Marietta, Georgia today to say he will not run for president in 1996. Frankly, looking at the dawning challenge of trying to organize a nationwide campaign, looking at what people like Bob Dole and Phil Graham and Lamar Alexander have gone through, I didn't see how I could both be Speaker of the House and be in a position to mount a, a campaign on that scale. Speaker says he won't endorse any candidate and hopes to be asked to chair the Republican National Convention. His decision comes three weeks after retired General Colin Powell said he would not be a Republican candidate for president in 1996. John Murphy announcing today, too, that he neither will be running for president of the United States. Sue joins him now with charts. That's because he's the chief executive right. of charts here at CNBC. <laughs> he already has the presidential position here at this CNBC. Is more fun. That's right, it is. A and a lot less controversial, huh? <laughs> That's right. Okay. Absolutely. So, John, given that, we're going to put you on the hot seat now that we've, uh, now that we've done a little, little praise here. We're going to talk about where the market's headed. And you're taking a look at, at kind of a, a different mix of, of things for us today. We're starting out with the greenback. 
Yes, because the dollar was very strong today, so and that may hold the key to what's going to happen in the stock market, at least through the end of the year. Let's look at the dollar-mark relationship. There's a lot of talk about not only the Germans, but a lot of other Europeans lowering interest rates. Uh, that normally is positive for the dollar. The dollar has actually been in a corrective phase, actually, for the last several months. You notice we troughed uh, <clears throat> against the mark down around 138, uh, right around the last week of October. We've been gradually moving up ever since then, but today a, a very strong rally. We closed up almost two fenigs today, uh, actually very close to that 144 level, as you can see. Uh, it's a new uh, seven-week high. It breaks us out of that little uh, basing pattern that we had. There's still a little resistance above the market at 144. I think there's a pretty good chance we're going uh, to take that out. We're back above the green line there, which is the 40-day moving average. That's really just a short-term thing. But we've also moved back above the 200-day uh, moving average for the first time in a couple of months. So a very strong day uh, in the dollar, not just against the mark, but against, uh, against all the European currencies uh, in particular. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think this is the first time in quite a while that we've had solid advances in the Dow, solid advances in bonds, solid advances That's in right. the dollar, too. Yeah. So it's kind of spread all the way across the Absolutely board. Absolutely, And what impact is that having? We know what impact it's having on the Dow, obviously, but what about the other smaller cap stocks? Well, that's interesting, Sue, because one of the uh, sectors of the market that is very, Im they're all impacted by the dollar, but generally speaking, when the dollar turns strong, we notice that very often this tends to benefit the smaller stocks relative to the larger stocks, and that may be coming just in time. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. This is the index of small stocks that we follow, and we've been talking a lot about market breadth and about divergence in the market in the sense that with the Dow and the S&P in new highs, this is where the divergence has been taking place. The smaller stocks peaked back in mid-September. We've been, uh, looks like we've been trying to trough out, and actually notice right around uh, October 27th when the, these small stocks started to turn higher. That was roughly when the, uh, the dollar also started uh, to trough out. And notice that uh, now today the Russell was up about a point, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's the first time in a long time we actually saw the Russell 2000 outperforming some of the larger indexes. The key there is the 304 level. We're still about a point below that. If the Russell can clear that 304 level, close above that, that would put us at the highest level in a couple of months and would confirm at least that the short-term trend is turning higher. It might be signaling uh, nothing more than a retest of those old highs. Uh, we, we, we still haven't determined a longer-term significance of this. I think the real test of the staying power of the stock market rally will be what this index does if it gets up near the old highs. But I think the rally in the dollar should help this. And I suspect we may see a little rotation soon, maybe out of some of the big cap stocks towards some of these towards smaller, the smaller ones. as we approach the end of the year. You know, there have been a number of traders who have been somewhat worried about the breadth of the market, the advanced decline ratio. How does the AD line overall look, John? Uh, so it looks almost the same as the last chart we just looked at. So I guess there's a story in there somewhere. Let's look at the advanced decline line. I wanted to show it because I'm making the point the weakness has been in the smaller stocks. Notice uh, the advanced decline line peaked in uh, right around J uh, September 15th and bottomed uh, October 27th. That's exactly what the Russell 2000 has been doing. And notice, even though we still have a divergence, we're still well below the September high, so there's still a caution signal on that. But you'll notice the trend does appear to be turning higher. And I think what's really going to determine this will be whether these small stocks are able to break out to the upside or not. And again, what we may see between now and the end of the year is the advanced decline line retesting its old high. So I think it carry some good news, at least uh, from a short-term standpoint, for the market. Okay, now that's the good news. How about, is there any bad news out there in this scenario? Well, John? the bad news, Sue, is that I think that uh, as we approach January, we might have a problem. The January effect also tends to favor smaller stocks into January. My concern is that we're going to get a lot of these indexes up near their old highs into January. Mm -hmm. This period of seasonal strength will run its course. I think at that point, uh, we could have more, more serious problems. But I think we're probably going to hold up okay, at least into January. Okay. What about the overall view, then, of, of the Dow? and the bond market working together. Everybody seems to be focusing now on 5,100. Um, do you think as we go into January that that is going to collapse or not I don't, quite that I, I think, extreme? I think, we'll probably, I think the, the small stocks will begin to outperform. I think that the, we may see some profit taking in the Dow, some buying in the smaller stocks soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, but one group we did see a lot of buying today with the gold stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, bond yields hit a two-year low today, and very often that tends to produce higher gold prices. Uh, gold uh, investors are certainly anticipating that the XAU index, which is the last chart that we have, 
uh, jumped uh, about 4% today. In fact, uh, this index hit a, uh, I think that's a two-month high in the XAU. And as you can see, we're back above the 200-day moving average. This is another caution signal for the overall stock market. But investors are beginning to bottom pick in the gold stocks and also the price of gold, which was up three points today. Okay, thank you, John. Okay, so John Murphy, our chief executive of charts <laughs> here at CNBC. <laughs> And coming up next, all the news that broke after the closing bell. Here with a preview, our stocks editor, Joe Kernan. Joe? Thanks, Sue. Uh, a leading uh, auto replacement parts uh, maker out with an ominous warning about the November 30th quarter. Plus, what does a, a leading Internet company and the Church of Scientology have in common? Well, those stories and more when Market Wrap continues in just a few seconds.